Hello folks, uh, welcome to this pre-production video. It's going to be a play along at, at home or at school, so I want you to write what I'm going to write. Uh, we're, the word I'm writing right now is pre-production, okay? Anytime you're doing a, a big project like we're doing right now, making a documentary about someone's life, it's a big deal. So you have to do a lot of thinking before you actually start uh, the doing part of what you're doing. So uh, pre-production, and uh, let's have you do this on your paper, because you're the producer. So put your name. And uh, the subject of your documentary is sitting right next to you. I'm going to do my documentary about a dog named Ruby, because um, I don't have any teenagers that I can uh, do, a uh, do a documentary of. So uh, this, is, this is how you want to organize your thinking at this point, all right? You know that to make your documentary, you're gonna be combining three main types of information, we'll just say. One of them is images. Uh, the other one is words, right? And this is what we could also call your narration. All right, so your narration. And then Music is something that I would highly recommend you using to set the tone. So you've got these three different things, and over here somewhere you've got your subject. And like I said, my subject is going to be a dog named Ruby. Now I'm sure some of you have already done this, but uh, I'm going to give you this information as a bonus. So. Your documentary is going to be three to five minutes long. So how many words are you going to have to write? All right, so this is a very important thing that what you're going to do, you're going to write those words out. You're going to write that narration out before you even uh, make your, before you even start, you're going to have all those words written. And the words are going to be dependent on the images that you're going to use. So part of your process, your thinking process, as you're developing these is going to be to ask yourself what images you have and how that's going to fit with the words and kind of go back and forth. Um, but a big question is going to be how many, right? That's what you want to know. So how many words are you going to have to write? Well, I did a little experiment. I recorded my voice talking for three minutes at a good pace. All right. So this is another thing to think about is your pace. How, how do you, how do, and, and watch when you're watching Ken Birds, think about this. How do you manipulate your voice and the speed of your voice so that your message gets across? But uh, I did a little recording of myself and then counting words, and a good pace is about 150 words per minute, which means that your uh, complete documentary is going to be uh, between... If you're three minutes, you're going to want to have about 450 words. Um, let's just say about 450 to 750 words that you're going to write and you're going to turn in uh, to me for feedback before before your before your video is due. It's going to be next week sometime. Um, so. As you're looking at your images, you're going to start to get, well, what kind of images are available to me? This is something you're going to have to work out with your partner, right? What, what do you have? Do you have baby pictures? Do you have uh, maps, right? Maps are good. Do you have any graphs? And why would you use a graph in, somebody's, um, in, in your documentary about somebody's life? Well, I don't know. If somebody is part of a minority group, it might be good to say what percentage of the population their minority group is and the place where they grew up, things like that. So these are just the different things you want to think about. Images. Are you going to lose, use any live footage? Mm, maybe not. I don't know. Ken Burns uses it pretty rarely, so you might want to think about that and how it's going to fit along, fit into our guidelines. But in any, any case, this is where you need to be right now. You need to start thinking about what words you're going to write, how that's going to fit in, and then what music you're going to use. Music, oh, I got them in between here. It kind of ties the two together. The images and the words are tied together with the music. Um, you might even use some images that are not uh, pictures of your friends, but, you know, like the classic example would be if your friend... Uh, if your subject loves football, you might find some images of football 
that aren't necessarily your subject playing football, that would be the best, but maybe just a picture of a football. So, um, in fact, it is possible to do this project if your uh, partner gives you zero images. That would be a worst case scenario, but you can still write about them uh, when, she, when you get uh, enough understanding of who they are that you can figure out what images would be appropriate. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, so in creating this three-minute documentary, what you want to do is you are going to want to use some subtitles. All right, so this is for your subject. What would be the appropriate subtitles? Because this is, this is just like when you had those big claims for your History Day project and you broke it down into a couple of different subcategories. So you're going to want to, for your subject, you're going to want to have maybe three different possibilities of subtitles, subcategories. Um, this is basically you're breaking your biography down into the significant pieces. You know, and three for a three to five minute documentary is good. So where does that come from? Well, here is our entry document. And that's probably a really good place to think about um, because each one of these questions here is so big. You know, so for your project, you might say, well, I really want to focus on this question. Um, uh, I want to talk about technology, right? Because my subject is really into technology, okay? Then, as you can imagine, one of your sections will be technology. And you have a subtitle. Um, that is subtitle, and I'll explain this when you see the video I'm actually going to make. Right now, you're seeing my thought process. Later, you're going to see my video. Um, because I'm focusing on a dog, technology is not going to really fit. But what is going to fit, because my dog actually lived in Honduras, is immigration status because I had to fill out paperwork. Um, and you'll find out when you hear the story to see if we could get this dog who was born in Honduras back into the United States. Um, regional influences. I'm going to talk about regional influences big time. And I'll probably talk about family background because uh, the dog fit into our family in a certain way. So those will probably be the three things. And you can build on this list. This list is not, these are just things to think about. Uh, but this is what I'm going to look at when, I, when, you, when you see me actually making the video. And I'll, I will uh, go, take you through that process. But I'm going to be looking at what do I call I call it immigration. Immigration. I'm going to talk about uh, what else? Oh, family. And I'm going to talk about regional. Okay. And so this impacts this because I know that my total is going to be about this many words. So when I'm thinking about my writing and I'm thinking about my images, uh, I want to think about how many images I'm going to need to go along with each one of these categories. I would say probably uh, four to six, I'm just guessing. Four to six images is going to be where I'm going to start when I start looking through my images, and I'll take you through that process. And then for words, I'm going to need about maybe 150 to 200 words for each one of these sections. And then 150 to 200 150 to 200, and then when I organize my narration in a paper format, right, I'm going to create a Google document, and you'll know more about this later, but I'm going to create a Google document that's going to have each one of these subtitles, So, and I might come up with a better name for the subtitle, but it'll have BAM, you know, and then here's my 150 to 200 words, and then I'll have my other section, and I'll have to arrange them in a way that makes sense. I might end up talking about family first. I probably will, but then I'll have my 150 words, and then I'll finally talk about the regional. In fact, these might be in a totally different order, but and then I'll have my 150 words. So now you've broken the, your project down into pieces, which uh, helps you do things that are more complicated.